A hotshot young impala being scammed. Bought an island? Bad choice. There's not much on the island except, well, the leader of the scamming gang that sold it to him. Now what does he do? I mean, it probably couldn't get much worse. Maybe he'll just go back to the mainland and carry on with his life. Uh, or maybe things could perhaps get worse. In fact, it looks like things could get a lot worse. That's worse. That's definitely worse. Dead is definitely worse than scammed. Scammed, dead. Hammer cop. Hammer cop, hammer head. That's what that means. And this bird has a head that is shaped like a... Yes, a hammer. Well done. It's also a bird that enjoys mud and gristle upon its fish food. How delicious. Yum, yum, yum. Imagine what the breath of a hammerkop smells like. A bit like dirty mud mixed with fish guts. I knew someone who had breath like that once. They are unsurprisingly still single. Very exciting, the annual extreme sport Wildebeest Marathon Spectacular is happening now in the Masai Mara. Here the Wildebeest are about to run the gauntlet of the Mara River, infested with crocodiles, boiling with rapids and of course thick with mud. This is the front runner, a Mr. Bruce for Wildebeest and he is running across the river in front of the rest. Now shortly we will see that there are a number of fans enjoying this extreme sporting spectacular and they are following their favorite wildebeest and while it may be not immediately apparent how to identify one wildebeest from the other uh, there are in fact a number of ways that you can tell one of these seemingly identical brindled gnus from the next one and the way you do that is to look at the tip of the tail. Uh, the tips of the tails are slightly different colors. You will find that the horns are slightly different lengths. You will also find that if you look carefully with a pair of binoculars, they wear a name badge or race number just below the navel. We've had a number of injuries this year and indeed a number of deaths. And the cleanup crew consisting of the Rupel's Griffin vultures, whiteback vultures and lappet faced vultures are currently cleaning up those that have not managed to make it through this year's extreme marathon. One of the younger participants there you saw jumping into the water, barely seven months old and already at the end of the marathon. It's spectacular stuff. You'll also see the media crew there in black and white. They will be following in the middle of the marathon runners. And I'd like to give a special shout out to them because they have to be as fit as the competitors themselves. They face the same risks and yet they are bringing us this magnificent footage. There are a number of them who seem to have lost whatever equipment is that they're supposed to be recording this spectacular on. Excellent stuff. This looks like a fairly basic and easy part of the extreme marathon sport. It gets a little rougher once they get on to the western bank where there could be prides of lions, there could be clans of hyenas, there could be a leopard or two. There may even be a rocket cat or cheetah looking to devour a tired participant in the great wildebeest ultra extreme. They say, I don't think I like this new recipe book that I've got here. I bought the ingredients down at the market and all I can taste is a lot of hair. I don't think Hairy caterpillar delight is a particularly delightful meal. In fact, next time, I think I'm just going to stick with the tried and tested, which is to eat my husband as he thrusts away. That's how it works with us. As soon as you get onto a newfangled diet, well, it's just disappointing. Just strolling around in the water. What am I going to see? What am I going to find? I'm hoping to find a fish. Because that's what I eat. I'm a fish-eating hare. I like the mud between my toes. I like the taste of scales run down my throat. I love the smell of muddy water in the pond. I enjoy walking 
There, there slowly, hoping to find myself a fish. Am I going to find a fish? Or am I going to find something else? Who knows? That's the joy of being a heron. Oh, I think I can see a fish in front of me now. As soon as I feel that thing come past my toe, I'm going to grab it with my beak. <coughs> oh, yes. Delicious. I got me a tilapia. Mmm. I'm going to go eat it on the side of the river here. Mmm. I like a tilapia. Mmm. The feeling of the scales moving down my throat. Mmm. The feeling of the flapping fish in my beak and around my tongue is delicious. Mmm. Delicious. Mm -hmm. Catch it again. Stick it down my throat. Ooh, the feeling is just too gorgeous. Ooh. Yum. Wash it down with a bit of water. Okay, let's see if I can give myself another fish. That was a good breakfast, but I want to have two breakfasts today, maybe. Mm -hmm. I'll walk alongside here to see if that fish's family is close by finish it off a bit. See if I can make it a two for one, although it's really a two for two, I guess, because I'm hunting twice, so it's not like I killed two for two. Ooh, I got another one. Mm. Yum. A two fish for breakfast. Let me wiggle my tail and joy. See how I did that? I always wiggle my tail when I'm feeling happy and joyful. I got another delicious tilapia. Mm. Yeah. Let me eat this tilapia. Wiggle my butt. Feels so good. Here we've got a oh, a young male leopard. And something has got up his well foot in the grass there. He's either stood on on a thorn, he's found an electric cable, or most likely there is a snake. And this is a stupid risk he's taking. He is clearly smacking the snake on the head. And this is very typical young male mammal behavior, taking dumb risks. You will very seldom find a young female leopard doing this. And if I'm not mistaken, that is a puff adder, which is the fastest striking snake in the wilderness. Now, he's been bitten. Let's go back and have a look there, because you can see there. He hits the snake with his right front paw, and in the next sighting, we've got him standing with his foot up and licking it. Here is a young elephant bull who has matured faster than some other elephant bulls might, and he's put his dingle dongle out and is wondering whether he can use it in some way. And I think you would agree that he's got the right idea. However, he seems to have picked a uh, target for his amorous, early as they might be, intentions, uh, that is slightly too large. And his climbing ability is also not very good. Oh, birth. Very uncomfortable birth. My own daughter, I think, was born in a much more comfortable state than this particular wildebeest. Certainly, my wife <laughs> didn't bang our child against a knobthorn tree prior to birth. And I feel that uh, this was probably a positive thing for us as human beings, but maybe for this wildebeest, having his or her head bashed against a, a knobthorn tree and scraped against some grass and spiked in the head with some twigs is, is a positive way to enter this life. Well done. You've made it out. And now, your mother will eat the amniotic sac and the afterbirth. As I have mentioned before, this is a fashion amongst human beings these days, a fashion I find uh, disturbing in the extreme, but each to their own, as it were. I can't see... Now, this young wildebeest has come out looking rather shocked, which, given how it's been scraped and bashed around, is not exactly surprising. I think it's also worth comparing here the developmental trajectory of this young calf 
compared with the human being infant. The human being infant will take more than a year to learn to stand. This wildebeest will probably take about 20 minutes. By the time its human counterpart has finally stood on its own two feet, this wildebeest will have had three or four girlfriends and in fact graduated high school. I suspect that for the mother wildebeest, it is a slightly easier path of motherhood than it is for a human being.